Hello, what's up? Uh, today we are going to go through an SEO content strategy. Uh, I'm whispering a little bit because my kid is asleep and I'm on parental leave, so I'm doing these videos um, while he's asleep. Um, if you're wondering why I'm talking so uh, low. But anyway, today we're going to do a SEO content strategy uh, with the code interpreter. And this is uh, something I've been working on for a few weeks where I've uh, come up with a process together with GPT-4 and now have designed a prompt that we can start working on uh, or working for. So this prompt is basically designed for anyone to um, drop it in a GPT-4 with code interpreter and the process will start. So usually when people have done SEO with ChatGPT, I mean, it's really easy to just come up with uh, 50 like blog article titles uh, for any business, basically. But uh, it doesn't. It's not uh, derived from any data-driven like decisions. Uh, it's basically just um, ChatGPT that is coming up with subjects uh, from like 2021. Uh, and this is what we are changing here because we're going to connect to SEO programs. Uh, so we're bringing real time data from like uh, traffic and uh, difficulty to rank for a keyword into Code Interpreter. And from there, uh, we are going to determine what keywords uh, out of five strategies that we are going to target. Uh, out of those keywords, we are tailoring a content strategy and uh, around 50 SEO optimized uh, blog titles that we can start writing to drive traffic that is uh, not only uh, relevant to the business we're doing this for, but that is uh, designed to have a few strategic angles to them to uh, gain more traffic. So. Um, Let's just go through the prompt that I've done. I'm going to paste it in here um, and let's read through it. So this uh, strategy is basically you send this prompt and then you replace this name here. Um, and the first phase, uh, phase one, will be to for GPT to understand your client uh, and you want to understand um, what they do, what their uh, USP is, what their um, what what how they are solving prob different kind of problems for different clients who the target audience is so this is basically how we're doing that uh, it's going to ask us to send all the text from our client's website after that we need uh, to understand the structure of the website so we're going to go into the sitemap copy it and give it to gpt this will help with uh, deciding things like pillar pages and like main topics and subtopics for um, the client and then uh, we're going to go into analysis it will uh, anal uh, analyze the text and sitemap uh, and then it will tell back to us what it sees or what it understands so this is the point where we can go yeah you've understood all the our client what their what whatever their products are and what their uh, target audiences are then it will go ahead and identify potential pillar pages that we can write content for after. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then it will uh, summarize um, the understanding of the client. And uh, in the end, it will give us uh, an explanation for what their uh, primary and secondary and other target audiences that uh, they have. And this will also be uh, taken into account once it starts writing the content strategy like for who is it writing um, articles and what's the search intent behind those articles basically it's really important that we prompt this into the AI before we start generating titles because otherwise uh, it's a high risk of just uh, generating irrelevant titles client submission of SEO reports. All right, so next step is client submission of SEO reports. And here is where we are going to send them some reports. And um, I think there are free services that will offer you most of these. Uh, the only one that we can't access for free, at least anyway I know, 
is the content gap. Uh, the content gap is a report that is like the most valuable. It's the report that tells you what your competitors are ranking for, but you are not. However, I have a way to, uh, with ChatGPT, uh, generate a content gap report for free, basically, if you just use a keyword uh, planner in Google Analytics or in Google AdWords. Um, but what we're going to send it is the uh, top ranking pages for the client. We're going to send it the um, content gap report and then uh, the organic keywords for the client that we are uh, doing this for. So the next step will be for it to analyze all of these reports and it will derive uh, five strategies out of it. And these are the five like angles that I'm trying to attack here because like, sure, you can just bomb out a lot of content, um, but these will be, uh, this will be a more sophisticated way of actually targeting keywords that are uh, very relevant to the client and they're low competition and they're high volume. So uh, these are the uh, five ways. Uh, first, we're gonna do the, um, it's gonna pick out basically 10 keywords for each of these. Uh, so it's gonna do keywords that the competitors rank for, but the client doesn't. And then after that, we have the strategy two, which is the low hanging fruit. These are all the keywords that are placed on the second page of Google. And we can easily push them up to the first place by writing a few articles. Uh, and then we've got the third strategy, which is the keywords where the client rank um, on page one, but uh, competitors rank higher. Here are Sometimes it helps with uh, writing new articles about these pages to uh, link to the page that is ranking for this word, but we can also use this information to improve the pages that are already ranking. Um, and then we've got the general high potential traffic but low competitor keywords. And after that, we're gonna do a few with all of the uh, pillar pages and uh, subtopics uh, underneath those. Uh, all right, next step is to provide um, keywords for each strategy. Uh, at this point, what we will have is a list of, uh, I guess, 50 or so keywords that uh, based off of these analyzes, we are going to focus on our whole strategy for basically and start writing articles for. After that, we got the phase three, uh, oops, which is the title generation. And what we are doing here is we're generating the, uh, let's see, I'm gonna change this actually to uh, three because five was too much. Um, yeah, what we're doing here is we're starting to generate these titles and this is the step where where this what I, when I've tried out this uh, process before uh, has started to be a little bit wonky because it doesn't like writing out of course 50 titles 50 meta descriptions 50 semantic keywords 50 table of contents uh, at, at at one go so it will do shortcuts and like um, yeah it comes up with all all kinds of, of things. So here's where we need to be a little bit uh, dynamic with it and can't follow this strict process. Uh, and anyway, what we wanna end up with is these, um, for these keywords that we have uh, landed in, 50 keywords, uh, we want three titles uh, along with all the meta descriptions with the semantic keywords and the table of content. Table of content is designed to write an article for 3000 words. And in the end, we will end up with a Google Sheets with all of this in a separate column. And uh, the goal, the dream, what, will, uh, what I will do uh, next is, I mean, you can just start uh, generating these blog articles one by one if you want, but the dream is to connect this up with Zapier uh, feed it the sheet and then have it just generate those titles uh, or those blog articles in one go. So basically 
stream generating 150 blog articles that you can then uh, give ton of value for your client with. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, that's the overview of the whole process. Let's uh, send this away and we'll see how this goes. All right, so we'll start with um, So for this experiment or for this, the purpose of like showing the process, we will work with Responster, with, which is a survey uh, builder. And so we're sending all of this text here from the website and it's now starting to understand what the clients, uh, it gives the name, what they do. And uh, I mean, this step is really important. Usually, I would tell it, uh, and I'm think I think I'm gonna include that in the prompt that it can't just start uh, generating this quickly because so many clients have a lot of more pages that you need to copy in, so you really so it really understands um, their needs. But anyway, I think this is getting it quite well. Um, what they do. Uh, Unique selling points, their target market, uh, primary, oh, it just goes ahead here. But anyway, now we will send them the sitemap. And the way to do that is to go like this. And it's already there because I tried it before. But you just write sitemap.xml and we will get access to their sitemap. Let's see, all right. And we'll send the sitemap. So we're now at, uh, let's see here. We're now at step number two. We've done the sitemap and the next one, it will analyze the sitemap, confirm the understanding of the client's business, uh, and then identify pillar pages. Uh, it will also tell us uh, about the target audiences again. And we, uh, yeah. So you see here, it gives us all of these uh, pillar pages and sub uh, topics that we can write about, like product and marketing, event and marketing. Now we are basically, um, I'm having it retrieve all of this information because what um, ChatGPT actually does is uh, like, it's not remembering all of this, uh, it's, reading in the prompt every time you send a new message it's just reading the entire history of the chat and then it's completing uh, predicting the next answer basically so by doing this by asking it to actually write out the target audience the pillar pages everything we are kind of designing a, this is a big prompt this is all a big prompt uh, this conversation up until when we're gonna start generating the titles then it will understand exactly uh, what to do um, so let's see uh, if it got it right yes uh, we've got summary on the sitemap uh, response offers comprehensive set of solutions for various feedback needs from customer insights to employee engagement um, yeah, features and capabilities, cool. So now we want it to, uh, it didn't, uh, sometimes this is, this is AI and it forgets things. So it didn't uh, give us the target audience. Uh, so I had to remind it, but here again, we're having it um, uh, write out all the things that we need it to focus on once it starts writing articles because if it doesn't do that, uh, it won't know that. So, wow, these are a lot of target audiences that we've got. Nice, and the next step will be to upload the data from uh, the top ranking pages, content gap, uh, and organic keywords. 
So we'll now do that. Here are the reports. All right, so we now uploaded all of the uh, reports and we'll continue with the second step, which is for it to go through all of this and basically choose a list of um, uh, words for each strategy um, that it can come up with. Let's see if it gets this. So what happened, uh, what usually happens in the content uh, gap report, which is a problem, is that all of the um, top ranking keywords that are in the gap report is of course the names of the uh, competitors. So these are keywords we don't want to write articles about or like it will probably just write the 10 keywords that it chose from that report and that will be all the competitors names which is yeah not uh, that's not what we want to rank for or we would like to but that's a different strategy. Um, Yeah, two, and it gives all of these ones. I will start with the one, and I think let's see if it brings us all of the competitors' names because because then we need to tell it to exclude all the competitors' names. Just focus on the keywords that you see opportunity in. Okay, it's now giving the top keywords. So. Uh, let's see if no uh, I would like this list to be a little bit longer because all of these are yeah they're high traffic but I don't see the relevance in it so in the end I'll ask it to redo these ones and uh, pick a, a little bit more relevant ones and now it will do the lowing fruits on page two um, first sponsor doesn't have that many keywords on page two so uh, it only gave these ones. Uh, then we've got the third strategy, which is what responster already ranks for, but they can do better. We will give these keywords. I mean, the one that we need to extend is this one. Um, I don't know. I want to tell it like these are not relevant keywords. Rethink again and give only the ones that you see are relevant. Uh, and then here we have uh, the organic keywords that responsor ranks on page one, but uh, yeah, we can do better. So here do we have a few topics and the next one will be based off the um, that has low competition, but high traffic. Okay, so it now asks if I want strategy five that are the pillar pages, but um, yeah, let's proceed with that and then redo step uh, or strategy one. Okay. Let's see now if it's out of all of these keywords that it has researched. Um, it will do a few, it seems like it wants to do long tail keywords for all of these ones. And this will be really uh, useful when we um, in the end do um, the titles. Cool. Ooh. I find the uh, words in strategy one not so cool. Give, let's say, twenty five that uh, represent opportunity and sorry for my spelling. Uh, and is um, very relevant for their clients search intent. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see what it does. It will now uh, look through the keywords again and pick out the ones that are more relevant. One of the good things about uh, assembling the content gap reports uh, yourself is that uh, even like programs like Ahrefs uh, content gap report is uh, quite flawed because 
it's only comparing like organic uh, competitors but it's not showing the real competitors uh, because it's not smart enough to know which uh, companies that are the real competitors so yeah it's showing like sites that have like similar words that you have and then um, it's giving let's see I wanted to avoid competitors. We're gonna have a, another list here. Um, yeah, anyway, the content gap uh, report is usually not that good from any SEO program because they're not intelligent enough to know your real competitors and the thing we can do with Code Interpreter is to upload all of your real competitors. You can ask ChatGPT what your real competitors are and I will have a, let's do this, a card here somewhere where I will link to that video in the future uh, where I do the content gap uh, report in Code Interpreter. But basically what you do is you export all of the keywords that your Com real competitors rank for and then uh, you exclude your keywords uh, all right no okay no competitors because it still gives uh, the survey monkey here uh, and let's do 30 Let's do 30 instead because I think this is the most important um, report to base the strategy on. Especially if it's a company that is not ranking for that many keywords themselves. Um, the way to know what other keywords are driving value are um, from the content gap report. We're also going to ask it now to give 15 keywords that are low competition in the gap report and high, tra high traffic and um, not a competitor name. Now giving us, okay, it gave a few um, more here it didn't do 30 sometimes it's really bad at counting but anyway um, so um, after we've done this we've we're, we're going to land in a list with 50 keywords that uh, are like the most strategically um, optimized ones to start generating content about and the plan is to start with okay survey what are uh, three articles that will be um, named with survey. Uh, we'll also ask uh, Code Interpreter to um, generate some semantic keywords that are also going to uh, drive traffic for this article. Here we go. Uh, mm, yeah, well, <laughs> some of these are the ones that. Um, came up in the beginning and it's probably because uh, these are weird ones that are not really uh, relevant to our like clients which are people that are creating surveys that uh, I want to say that more relevant though and then it to give the entire list give the entire list of keywords uh, so far and then I think we're done there we have a list uh, that we can start generating content around it understands the client and everything so um, yeah these are more uh, relevant topics really like random topics but uh, 
uh, has a lot of search traffic here and almost no competition. So this gen this is uh, represents huge opportunity. Um, okay, we're gonna give it. We're gonna make it to. Uh, we okay. We're gonna make it uh, generate all the keywords so far, and we'll see. Now my kid woke up. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, uh, let's just finish this. Um, all thread just so far. Then move on to generating titles. So now it. Uh, realizes that it was an irrelevant and we're gonna continue with uh, the next one and it's going to do this uh, let's see here on-site service uh, it's going to start writing about and here we go so this is basically the step where we um, need to be more dynamic with it and work with it. Uh, continue, but for now we'll just show this uh, way to continue. What we want though is for it to generate this in a table format. What that will do, and we want three for each word. Um, three for each keyword. And what that will do is that we can just copy it and paste it into a Google Sheet. Uh, after we have generated uh, all of the titles, copy them over into a Google Sheet, this is what will uh, enable us to automate the whole process. We'll basically press a button and all of these titles along with, because the meta description, the semantic keywords, and the table of content is what we are going to refer to in Zapier uh, to uh. OpenAI when it's going to write up an article uh, about um, about uh, this, and that's what is going to um, make it possible to write a really high um, um, quality article. So. Um, yeah, you just keep on doing this. Basically, uh, this is the only manual thing about it. You need to, for now at least, because it can't write all of them at the same time. But uh, event service software, sure. Then we need three articles about that. And in the end, you should be able to give 150 or so um, suggestions of articles to your client. Um, yeah, so. I will uh, end this video here because this is the purpose of this process to be able to follow something with code interpreter and make uh, like um, um, more data driven decisions. Um, yeah, the only thing I didn't cover in this video is how you retrieve all of these reports. I mean, the reports are available in many free programs. Uh, except the content gap strategy that is I'm going to make a video for that uh, but otherwise you should be able to uh, have all of these reports um, for, for free but I'm using hrefs uh, just for now all right so that was it for this video and let me know if you have any thoughts if you've experimented with this at all uh, I have uh, so far been writing a lot of here we go a lot of um, a lot of articles uh, for SEO purposes for a few businesses and had really great results uh, showing um, from a totally new site to a few thousand exposures a day, um, which is really, you know, free marketing. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a, it, it, it will be an opportunity for the coming year, year and a half. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen to SEO after that because the whole internet was, will just be clattered with uh, SEO content but uh, or AI SEO content. Um, but so far we have a few years ahead of us now where this will be 
a great opportunity. Uh, yeah, so that concludes this video. Thank you for watching and we uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.